not that we want to get away with anything, but if you're covered by him, everybody knew you. We all knew you. Everybody, everybody knew my mom, you could get away with anything at school and at church. And um, being this close to church, they were coming the door, swinging on the we had to walk in. And, but it was a good upbringing, as Ms. Paula said, they lived right across the street over there. Um, the lady who kept her sometime in school lived right here. And another lady who made tip for us lived just another block over there. So we were surrounded by community and everybody knew everybody. We were able to walk to school right up to Williams, walk to school right up to Lincoln. Um, it was a big family community. No one was ever walking alone because we all walked together to school. It was a group of us going and coming. And after my kindergarten and first grade years, my brother and I would walk to school with my mom, because you know, just three and a half blocks up the road, and we all walked together and you know, come back home with my mom. And um, as the, the once we, if anyone was here on uh, uh, Thursday night when we were talking about the where Mom Wright is up there, that was a community uh, little store, the Tiffany Inn, and Barbecue Pit that the Davises had, and they were all members of our church here. so. We were just all intertwined, and back when I was growing up, um, the majority of the things that were held in the community was at the church or school, mm -hmm. so we were right close to everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, Citizensville isn't that far, but when, uh, you know, Lincoln High School was a big Friday Terry, you know, one of the best football teams around, <laughs>
grasp of how connected everyone was to the community and how they had like outreach programs. Uh, and so that kind of sparked a, a good interest. Uh, and so when we moved to Gainesville in 2000, it's like 2010, 2011. Uh, it's all right if you don't mind. No, yeah. that day is the anniversary. <laughs> <laughs>
shell, the uh, flashlight, Phyllis uh, Benjamin. Uh, so we, we uh, as, as, as was mentioned before, uh, not only Spring Hill, but Gainesville in general, uh, each side of town was like a big community. And our common denominator was Lincoln High School. We all uh, came to Lincoln from, uh, from the, those that went to Williams, those that went to Aikwin, those that went to Duval, uh, all the surrounding areas. And we were like a big community. Uh, the Tipping Inn, you know, when we got off the bus, we kind of flipped over to the Tipping Inn uh, and got our stuff before uh, school started. Uh, I was uh, talking with some of the uh, kids that were on this side of town, and when we got, when Lincoln got closed and they had to bus, uh, it was, I hadn't thought about this, but uh, some of them and, and some of the Buster Coleman and some of the kids said this was the first time they had ever ridden a bus because they they walked to Williams and then they walked to Lincoln. So their last senior year was the only time they had ever got on a bus to go to, uh, to school. So what the common denominator I remember is that what Ms. Uh, Vivian said, it, it's the people. We, we, we were a community that looked out for each other, and it was that unity that brought us all together, whether we were, were on the east side of Gainesville, or over here on the southeast side, or over at uh, at, at uh, Aikman Jones. We, we were all a community, and each community had its strengths. We, we, uh, we had uh, our, our our theater, the Rose Theater, we had that on one side of town, we had Lincoln High School on this side of town, we had Duval where we would have our games at night and everybody would come over there. So each side of Dan and Citizens Field on the east side of Gainesville. So every part of the city had its own culture and we all came together and, and as she said, if one needed anything, uh, we all were there. We had great educators. We we had we took a lot of pride in our communities. Uh, it was it was just a wonderful time, and I, I really treasure living in that era. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So um, we we wanted to um, today as our people, we've chosen three communities. Uh, we started out here in Springfield. So that's why I've asked the people who were from Springfield to share what they most were uh, proud of or what they most liked about Springfield. We're going to go to each community and when we get to Duval, we're going to find out from people in Duval what, what is the best thing about them in Duval. Mm -hmm. um, when we get to Swag, we'll ask them. You know, we all want to come. We want to invite Springfield to come mm -hmm. to all of those meetings. Mm -hmm. If you can, please join us to give support to those communities. So, um, Swag, could you tell us uh, your, could you introduce yourself, your name, and um, I know that we have like, I know that we have a And what are you doing in Swag? Well, I'm sorry, I'm a resident.
as well before. I raised my girls there. You know, so every place has its good points and its bad points. And I hate to agree that we have that sanitation that people look upon Lake Ellis, which is called Sugarfoot. And I'm very proud and I would like to learn more about Sugarfoot community and everything that has been, you know, the history. But honestly, we just have to embrace things as they come along. I've done it. I love to show, share more with you. I want to let the ladies more, my chairperson from Slash, she can tell you more about uh, the resources we bring. But it's a beautiful community and I thank you all for sharing with me and I hope that I'm working with my, my story. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Sandra McGill, Chris, and Thank you. 
Church history. Um, I feel empowered. I feel uh, that I definitely will be back uh, to really lay a fabric and thread that has a common bond, and it's just truly a blessing to be here. Thank you for having both of us. Thank you all. Okay, so next we're going to um, introduce our empowered team.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Bomber, the City of Angeles Community Investment Area. Uh, I've been very happy to be able to be a part of the Empower team and help out with everything that I can. Um, looking forward to hoping to be able to make a difference in all the things that we're targeting to improvements. Um, so I'm trying to make sure we've got the video going on the screen as well. Um, but I think, I think we're going to do some great work for Spring Hill. Thank you. 
John keep trying to get the, excuse me, they can work on the sound. It's not loud enough. Yeah. We just keep working on the sound, it's not loud enough. Yeah. 
The other thing is across the street in Depot Park was the old Bears Hardware, B-A-I-R-T-S, Bears Hardware, which is now Hardware. And that also is a part of this new neighborhood. Now, I really want to talk about my greatest love of this neighborhood, and that is the Cotton Club Museum and Culture Center. This is a Because in the 40s, when uh, World War II started, the soldiers at Camp Levin in South Florida had to build all of the buildings at the Army Base, which was Camp Levin. They cut the trees, built the lumber, built all the buildings. When the war ended and those buildings were sold away, the two brothers who only stood on the corner of 8th Street and 7th Avenue for the Caribbean brothers, they purchased one of the buildings and brought it to Gainesville. During that year, the government was selling those buildings for how the teachers had to make sure that you could move it. Building was brought here to Gainesville, and there's a lot of history behind it, but eventually it was purchased by a lady whose name is Sandy Mountain. And she decided she wanted to have a big dance club, a place where big bands could come and entertain African Americans who realized we're talking about Jim Crow and segregation and big bands could not play in our clubs and could not live in my hotels so they didn't have a place that they could sleep over and play around the seven different places. Gainesville had a black hotel. But this building now that we're calling the Cotton Club Museum was originally called the Cotton Club. This is my night named it for the Cotton Club in Harlem. Through our doors, some very famous people came through and up to the stage. And those folks were James Brown, B.B. King, Ray Charles, Bergen. All of them played on the stage that's still here. When my church purchased this property in the 1900s, one of the things we canvassed the neighborhood about was what they wanted to see here. And they indicated that they wanted something educational, something that would bring some of the kind into the area. And we finally decided on the museum. We offer information about African American culture and history. We bring children over, we have entire schools, sometimes of them, churches, the neighborhood. We're a rental facility, but we're an integral part of Gainesville. We're so happy to be that and to offer this to the Springfield community. They love us around here. The neighbors keep close watch on everything. Uh, we've never had any incident that was negative. Uh, they keep such a watch a lot, so it's wonderful to live with you. Your children. Thank you. 
So, um, we we'll to have to do the do Thank mm -hmm. you. 
uh, and then the increase the value of homes. Also, weatherization and solar installation can provide opportunities in what we call green jobs, doing work that contributes to managing and conserving our natural resources, like installing solar panels on homes and weatherizing homes. Project Empower is working with other organizations in Alaska County to create more green job opportunities and make them more accessible for people. So this is just a quick overview of some of the things we want to talk about today. Um, global warming, and the need to transition to clean energy, the importance of making sure low-income communities are part of this transition and helping to make the decisions about what we do, and finding ways to pay for weatherization and solar and creating more green jobs in our communities. There are many options available that we can try to explore together, including expanded weatherization and electrification, solar panels with battery storage, and microgrids, creating more green jobs. And there are new federal funding sources available to help support our community efforts. And there are many organizations who are involved in this project to support Spring Hill. Um, it's represented in our power team, um, our, we have our advisors who are here as guests today to help us, and most importantly, the community members themselves that we really want to work with directly to make all these decisions. Yes. 
system comprised of about 17 research and development institutions across the country. And they are doing cutting edge research in different areas of scientific, scientific and technical expertise, anything from national security, and, uh, environmental science, advanced manufacturing, and energy. And the National Renewable Energy Lab is one of those labs, and we are focused on renewable energy as well as energy efficiency technologies. Uh, it's located in Boulder, Colorado, which is just outside of Denver. And we have a little over 3,000 employees. Uh, the scientists there and the researchers there, uh, they're working on everything from sustainable transportation, uh, energy security and resilience, uh, cyber security uh, in terms of the supply chain, and it's broken into uh, also domains of wind, solar, geothermal, hydrogen uh, technologies as well. And Laura and I are working in uh, the research uh, systems and design and engineering. Uh, let's see what else. We are committed to implementing 100% renewables and resilience. And in terms of the technical assistance goal, uh, Laura just briefly touched on that. But if you can look up, there's basically four domains. Uh, Arrow is the technical assistance provider for the Project Empower uh, project. And we are supporting across these four domains in terms of weatherization, solar, green jobs, and leadership. And we are going to really do a deep dive when we meet in small groups today uh, just to discuss that. So thank you very much for having us.
again, we also have a higher percentage of people in our communities here that are in rental property. And there's no incentive for the landlord to upgrade the property to an efficient standard. So you have even a bigger uh, mountain to climb with the next one. So where, where do we start? Where do we go? You know, we can find a problem, we have resources here, but where do we go? Well, we're right here at the beginning block. We're in our community, we're talking to people in our community and saying, let's organize a plan forward for this. Let's utilize resources we already have. You know, when you look at the next block there, low cost and no cost changes, well, that's what the community organization program does. And we do low cost and no cost changes. And so we have those resources in our community. We have Rebuilding Together, North Central Fort Here we have Gainesville uh, Regional Utilities Elite Program here. And that's like the first three blocks. Understanding low cost and weatherization. But what's missing? We just don't have the numbers. We're not affecting all the houses that need to be affected. So we have to expand these uh, efforts quite a bit. But the next two blocks in there, we have to begin to talk about electrification, you know, getting that burning stuff in your house out of your house and changing the work line, increasing the health in our neighborhood by doing so, and lowering the cost. We have to begin to touch that and then bringing in renewable energy to our communities in a way that doesn't leave some communities behind. Uh, again, that's the thing we need to work on in the future. Next slide. So, weatherization, electrification, and the biggest thing is the envelope. You know, our building skin. You know, 40% of the houses in America don't have enough insulation in the attic. It's the easiest thing you can do, but if you don't have the work all to do that, you can't change it. Um, but that's, you know, that's the second slide, to the plumbing insulation. Um, windows and doors, leaking windows and doors, upgrading our windows and doors. That could work in our homes. How do we become comfortable in our homes? Uh, we have simple paint and limited frame windows that are on the style of the clothes right now. That's how we build the floors for years. Heat pump technology, you're going to hear a lot about heat pump, heat pumps, the Inflation Reduction Act, the widening administration is going on that, and going forward is going to be a function of electrification. One of the big changes will be heat pumps, and there will be pumps to do that. Uh, and of course, LED lights are right, my all time favorite. So weatherization benefits, lowers your bills. That's what we're all about. First and foremost thing, I want lower bills for everybody. That's one of the big things we're pushing on. But when you do the weatherization, you need this thing, it actually improves your comfort. You live in better homes. It's more comfortable. Uh, increased home and, and your saleability of your community value. Again, you have lower utility bills. What we found is people move less often. So as renters, if you're the landlord, actually benefits you because you don't have that turnover. You can have a property that has more utility bills. It's not something that you can push, but it benefits both sides of the coin there. Again, with that lower turnover, you have better neighborhood really stability. Uh, stability, stability. I make up work, I can't figure it out. And lower gentrification. If you can stay here in your neighborhood, other people can't move in. The change in character is so well in the story this morning. It reminded me of the time I grew up in and some of the things I've missed in all the moving around that I've done. So again, I appreciate that in the story. But behind the scenes, when you put all this together, you're increasing jobs. And your entry level jobs, all the way up to technology, like to extremely good jobs. So you start and go, the sky's the limit in this territory. So GRU's here, and I guess you're represented back here. The LEAP program does a lot of that intermediate work, and they do it well, and they really can change the character of the whole thing. Very accurate, trying to explain the character of the transition going on. So let me, I'll go to this point, I'm going to go first. The moment in time, I thought, there's so many transition points right now. Fundamentally, they're economic. 
the utility industry is facing uh, at, at, uh, obsolescence of many of its, uh, of its models and its equipment. Most of the utility uh, uh, business models are from the 40s and 50s. A lot of the equipment that they put in the 70s, 60s, and 70s. These coal plants, some gas plants are becoming uh, obsolete. So they got to replace them. The, the choice of the industry is to replace them with gas plants. Natural gas plants. We want to persuade them to give, and, and, and economics and I'm going to be very clear that they should replace them with renewable. So, but that discussion is ongoing right now. Not necessarily what you're doing, but it's very actively going on. You should be aware of it. So, I say that because you're folding into that process. Now what we're saying is that utility, they understand the value of renewable energy, but they want to control it all. They, you, if you got on the I-75, you see one of the biggest solar farms you ever want to see in your life, one of my four or five They'll take that power, bumping it, and sending it to municipal. Not a bad thing. I want to see a resident or a church or a school put a system on their roof and gain the savings from putting that system on their roof in their bottom line, in their property, in their household, to reduce that energy burden that they're facing. That's where this conversation needs to go. And that's, that that's a real challenge, particularly in this state. So be aware that you have been really down an important road here. This project is the only one that was funded by this, by this program in the whole state of Florida. That's not what you're doing here is incredibly important. I better move on. I'm going to take my time. Go ahead. So, so, uh, so community, so that, and, and give me a little bit of, uh, Verification or the implementation of what, what renewable energy is. Most people think of the solar panel. Most people think of the solar panels on the roof. That's the that, that's basic version. Uh, you can have, as I said, that utility, the utilities are building these huge solar farms. If you go to Georgia, South Georgia, on any major highway in South Georgia, you want to find mile after mile. Uh, another variation of it is something called community solar. What happens there is a community of active people sit down and say, we believe that this is valuable. They come together as corporate or whatever, and they figure out how to build that and cite it in their community. And they share in the resources and the savings from that energy that comes down there. It has to be a very well coordinated, very, uh, very deliberate process for that, for that to work. That, that model is growing around the country very strong in some areas. The other one is utility so I talked about that already. So the next slide. Now, I'm really excited because in addition to this, the, the, the economics of renewable energy, we're now seeing technology take hold. Now we're seeing the idea of modernized electric transmission grids so that you can now put intelligence into the, the flow of electricity and make it more useful, make it more efficient, and make it more convenient. So, what we're seeing now is something called a micro report. It's, it's similar to community solar, but as much as with intelligence. Uh, basically, the basic form is you, you organize a renewable energy source, most like your solar, and you direct that energy into this uh, uh, coordinated transmission, most of the local transmission. And then it can be used and controlled locally. Most of the of old, this 50 to 60 transmission grid are what they call centralized. There's somebody sitting in a room 150 miles away from your house, figuring out how and when you get power. This is going to be down the street from you. Why is that basic? In, in Florida, if a microgrid were in place in a hurricane and the grid goes out like it did in this last storm, that microgrid, particularly if it has battery storage, would likely come back up within hours, maybe even less than a day. Versus, I mean, people who live in uh, Panama City, they might live in Panama City out for months after Hurricane Michael, or recently in Orlando, they were out for weeks after Hurricane or was the idea. So, this is incredibly important for the state of Florida. To my knowledge, there's been only one plan for a microgrid before, by Tico, Temple. I believe it will happen most significantly when people in the community say, this is important to us for our economic needs, more important for our disaster planning needs. You feel that pain. Utilities, I guarantee 
technology is being viewed and unfortunately as disruptive. So you want to fix it ahead. I think that's what that, you don't have to worry about that. The economics and climate risk are going to take care of those issues. It's now very clear that businesses, after, particularly after these last series of storms, they can't be sitting there waiting for the power grid to come back up. I was still in all my two for a week and a half ago after the storm and the power was down. It took them 45 minutes to get their cash register. I can guarantee you Walmart is not going to be sitting around much longer accepting that level of risk. And not just you in your homes. So these technologies are going to come. I don't know what everybody tells you about how difficult they are. They're going to happen because now it's not clear that our economy and our weather system demands it. Um, now, why is it lower cost? Number one, the technology is beginning to take over. The cost of technology is beginning to take over. But number two, as I indicated, many of these utility operations and systems are antiquated. Their cost, you don't see. I used to see them as utility owners. But most, most folks at the house already see that bill coming in the mail. They don't see all the stacked costs behind them. Every year, a utility company comes to the utility system, to the utility commission. And they said, we spent this amount for oil, the natural gas. And they get that money back right there to charge you for it. It's called a recovery cost. And you never see the fact that natural gas jumped 150%. And they didn't choose to go to an alternate level or they didn't choose some ways of avoiding that cost. We should have that conversation all the time. So you, when you begin to go to these little technologies, these localized transmission grids, much of that cost is going to be reduced. It's not going away, it's going to be reduced. So the technology, the, uh, the, uh, up, the upgrade of, 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 uh, of the grid, there's a modernization of the grid. And then lastly, I believe we have to allow, we have to move forward with, 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 with individual residential renewable energy. It's been the biggest fight before that I've seen. Last year, there was a bill basically got something called net metering. And that really is the idea that when you buy a solar unit with one roof and, and you get it and it runs, and I have several friends, they need to stand there and watch that meter turn back and get out. Because of the, 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 the family, once they begin to turn that just they actually turn to the meter At some point, it generates more electricity than you need in your house. And that meter is the idea that once you do that, the utility should purchase that excess energy from you. And there are, are economic and positive reasons for them to do that. I won't go into all, all, all the stuff that's going on that they talk about. But I believe we have to bring that meaningful and positive to the floor. We have to give residential homes and businesses and schools and churches an incentive to put a solar panel on their roof and one of the other and this project is to do a faith-based outreach. In other areas of the country, churches are putting solar panels on their roof. They're putting parking on in their parking lots, putting panels on those car awnings. And, and some of the most one of the one that really ones I get to talk about is that, that church then took some of the savings that it realized and, put, and started a, a um, so like a food pan, they started putting in their church to help their parishioners grow in the utility. That's good. That's good. And that's where we're going to go. And that's where we got to go. You are the beginning of that in game two. I want to hear the last time. So how was this prepared? Uh, there was some conversation earlier about the program that work. Is that indicating you? A lot of that money has come from a federal fund that was very underinvested. But now what we have all of a sudden are some incredible opportunities. <clears throat> there was a, a bill passed by Congress last year, the last year before, uh, the Infrastructure Investment Act. That bill had millions of dollars, a portion of which were allocated to deal with this infrastructure, the, the electric bill. It's up and down and tax credits to the utilities to take on that. It's up and down right now how it's going to work. A new, a new bill that was passed last year, I have a faction for you on that, is something called the Inflation Reduction Act, which has various elements in it. One of the most significant ones was more on, on more than $100 billion would be that's going to be directed is to increase the dispersion and, 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 and the distribution of uh, renewable energy. One of the particular strategies is, is this what you're looking at today, too empower communities 
show raise for the money that's coming out of this building. Get money out of shit. So I am an investor in putting up a strategic plan with this group to go to Washington and talk to people who I know in executive offices at the U.S. Department of Energy and say this program needs to be a part of whatever money is coming from the Inflation Reduction Act to flow. Or anybody. I believe that should be an objective. Now, there's another program, another initiative, I should say. I don't know. It's still up in the air what this is. But President Biden came out and said, we recognize that uncertainty communities have been starving hard because of the lack of investment. And so we gave up an executive order that called Justice 40. Uh, Highly President Google. Justice 40 is, 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 is an issue for the president by said, I think every federal agency needs to explore its budget to determine how we allocate at, uh, at least 40% of its budget to overcome the past disparities and uncertainty. I, I'm amazed from my point of view, no one's heard about this. You can Google every federal agency and their just for the strategy, and there's one of them. Huh. Department of Energy, EPA, all of them have a justice for the strategy that's on the, on the books. Now, whether or not those things get implemented, how they get implemented, is very much in the air right now. We're doing rulemaking on that right now. But in my mind, so classic example for me. I heard about this community in Orlando. Uh, this community, every time a major hurricane comes to a black community, they get flooded out. And everybody knows about it. Okay? And this last storm, they were talking, everybody in Orlando was, was, the water was gone, and I heard like, a week after the storm, yeah, they were still in this community figuring out how to get to that house, never long, get, get, get the uh, get, get, get the houses back. In my mind, somebody should be in Washington saying, wait a minute, you said that if you want to deal with the star of the stars, why isn't HUD, why isn't EPA, why isn't uh, uh, material, somebody down here figuring out how to help these people deal with this historical flood problem? And I guarantee you something on the building that's going on in downtown LA. We're not questioning. So, what, until you as, as local people grab onto these issues, Put them in front of the promise people, put them in front of the mayor, and, and the children exactly. I don't think it's going to move as fast as it should. So I'm going to encourage you, get on top of the Fish Reduction Act, get on top of Justice 40 as you move forward in this, in this process. I'm going to be invested to ensure that we put together a strategic plan that makes you stand in a favorable light. And, 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 and at least in the Department of Energy, I'm really excited. Emerald is here. I'm very familiar with Emerald. Uh, uh, some other projects you guys have tell me in fact. Uh, really excited. I mean, on a Saturday, you get a utility, send folks to a meeting in the community. That's it. That, that's it. I don't, I don't, I, I'm really having to impress with GRU for years when I was on the mission. And then I, I really got impressed with going to the campus. And I see that they got uh, recharging stations in parking garage. And they tell you, when they're born. That's the price. So um, you, you, I said that so you're dealing with a very positive uh, partner in GRU. You're dealing with a very positive partner at the federal level. You then, you're standing, in my mind, close to shovel ready to begin to, be to take advantage of a lot of these uh, initiatives that have put down the pipe. But it won't happen automatically. You gotta get your strategic plan right, your strategic plan right, you gotta uh, get your data right, which you we have most of it already laid out. And then it's designed this program plan. And I think you're gonna, I'm excited for, for, for what's gonna happen. I wanna congratulate Kwana, Duran, and the others on the committee for, for what you guys have done. I look forward to working with you.
and then expand that discussion to the broader community and to evolve and swag communities and get engaged in designing what kind of a future we want for these communities so that we're in a position to have a good plan that, that we can take to federal funding agencies that are waiting to, to provide funding for these kinds of things and become a model of community that can inspire other people. That's what we are hoping will happen. Uh, so now we're going to make a transition. Just a minor hiccups. The remote it worked when we tested it. Yeah. Didn't work after we tested it. Sorry. I think the presentation went well overall. No, it's good to see you guys here. It's good to see you guys here. At some point, I'm gonna make my way back over to Boulder. I've read a lot about the city. It looks really interesting out there. Yeah, yeah, Boulder is really cool. Yeah. So you've been there before? Like, you've been I've been through there. Through there, okay. Through there. So I've been through across the states on a loop one time. Oh, wow. okay. So that's been years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool out there. Uh, I actually got Friday my approval for my defense book with my dissertation. Oh, great. So I'm going to start oh, working on it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Tomorrow I work on doing my IRB stuff soon. Okay. And then I'll start reaching out to people to try to get the focus. It's really exciting. Good. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. We'll grab something to eat. Now's the time to head back. Can I grab a sandwich? Shooting no, it's okay. It's okay. I figured I'd wait up there just in case. Yeah, well, I don't know. You know, I think I forgot to turn it on. That might be what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I've got your the adapter still up there, so you'll want to get that to plug back in there. Yeah, the, the um, yeah, I'll, I'll grab it right now so we don't forget it. Not that bendable. With the names. Yeah, I Oh, 
And the Open Door Church is a very uh, vibrant, active church. So, uh, I'm Vivian Thyler. I was raised in Spring Hill. Uh, my church is here. I chair, well, actually, I'm founder of Cotton Museum and Cultural Center here. And I now live in Lincoln States, but we own property across the street over there. So I'm still around. I'm Daniel Blumberg. I work for the City of Gainesville, Gainesville Community Reinvestments Area. Um, our office is located over at uh, GTEC off of Hawthorne Road. I'm on the Empower team, and as I said earlier, I'm really hoping that we can help the communities of Spring Hill, uh, Duval, and Swag by helping alleviate the energy burden. I'm actually also working on my doctoral, which is related to this topic, so, so it's actually really interesting to be able to be out here and help everyone out and learn. Mm -hmm. So I'm Derek Frazier, uh, a member of the community. I will say that uh, I, I've spoken to Hope uh, a few times. I'm not certain she remembered me or not, but um, in reference to the weather, the weatherization job program, and so the leak, more or less like the leak program. And so, uh, so I guess I have a maybe a, a personal like story, so to speak. And so my my wife and I we applied for the leak program. I was told that it was going to take like several months in order to uh, to get the ball rolling and um, and so somehow we were able to expedite uh, uh, the situation and mm -hmm. actually get some things like uh, uh, not necessarily done because what we're still we need to get like one more quote uh, mm -hmm. and then we can move forward with with the leak program mm -hmm. uh, and so Someone from GRU came out and did an inspection, just like uh, Hope uh, mentioned, and um, maybe it lasted about an hour. Uh, There's two individuals that came out uh, from GRU, and uh, so they checked um, the windows, they checked the, uh, they went to the attic and looked at the, uh, the installation, uh, but, well the installation, uh, as well as like the, uh, the duct work. Um, and so um, the only thing that, that, that was an issue for, for my house was really just the duct work. And so I need to now just get like three estimates. I have two just down to one. Um, and then once that's taken care of, and then uh, GRU will decide which vendor mm -hmm. they want to roll with. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the individuals will come out and do the work. Um, and so just want to say that the league program, it is a, indeed a, a legit program. So, uh, so if you have individuals uh, who meet the criteria, please advise them to, um, to apply. How, how long did That's it the doctor? Take? Okay. Mm -hmm. How long did it take? Say it again now. How long did it take for you to do it? For the, okay, so. From the start to where you are. So I submitted my original paperwork. It was probably, I'm trying to say, was it the last of December? Because it seemed like it was just before the um, the gas was about to go on break for uh, for the winter. Mm -hmm. for but the it's holidays. all relative, isn't it? Yeah. There is no one, because as you said, you had to get bids and all that, so I know yeah. you know more about that. Yeah. <laughs> but there is no way to wait. December to now. But that's. Well, not, no, that, uh, that's expedient, yes, but I'm saying you can't expect them all to be that expedient because uh, I know there's a lot involved. And my sister was very successful as well. She was without heat at all and she was evaluated and she's so, so grateful uh, that she was able to access the program. So it is a great program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You are? We are, but if we're in the, if you're in the county, we encourage you to use the county program instead of your use, just because they're new, so they don't have yeah. long enough of a waiting time. So Betsy wanted to explain Yes. Uh, I'm Betsy Riley. I'm the Sustainability Manager for Alachua County. Um, I checked the map, and, the, and, and we have a, a program as well, an emergency program. Um, we wanted to, so the GRU's program is only applies to GRU customers. Um, there's a lot of customers around the county that also play electric mm -hmm. um, or, or, or some of these other providers. And so what the county did was um, say that, that we wanted to make sure that these other um, residents also had access to similar programs that the city of Gainesville residents have. And so our program for the pilot, and the county commissioners might decide after the pilot to expand it, um, but for now is only for those who are outside the Gainesville municipal city limits. And I, I checked and all of Spring Hill is within the municipal city limits. So let me so direct again to the GRU Spring programs. Duval, however, um, is gonna will qualify um, in large part for the county's programs, as well the swag area. So I said hi to them as well. Um, but yes, we've got uh, fifteen thousand dollars. Ours is only rentals, um, only only rentals, not homeowners. Um, but it's up to fifteen thousand dollars per unit. So if you've got a duplex, that's two units. So that's thirty thousand dollars for the building. Um, it only applies for single family homes, duplexes, and quadplexes. Anything bigger than that um, doesn't qualify again yet. Uh, we might choose to expand the program um, this summer at the end of the pilot. And um, it does come with an affordability commitment. So one of the concerns of the commissioners was that we were going to, you know, go in, we're going to have these great upgrades to the building, and then the landlords might be motivated to turn around and raise prices. Um, so, as part of uh, receiving the grant award, landlords also commit not to raise rent prices beyond inflation each year. So, um, so yeah, that's our program, and it's very it's extensive. It does what those other programs do, but we also we can also replace um, refrigerators with energy efficient units, and you know, clothes dryer and appliances. So, um, it's a we won't, it doesn't, we don't, we won't do any replacements like that. So we won't replace roofs, we won't replace structural issues, uh, we can't upgrade electrical systems, and in fact the buildings can't have those problems for us to work on them. Um, but one thing I'd like to do is, especially the roof, uh, you know, maybe we could work with landlords so that we'll pay for the insulation if they want to go ahead and replace the roof. Uh, and then maybe that way they can get through the program a little faster. So we're working on, on that as an idea. What about mobile homes? Do you do anything with them? So right now, all I because I've had that question now, we uh -huh. do not have any formal guidance on mobile homes. So what I'm doing is, if a mobile home provider reaches out, I am taking their information and uh, and making a note of how many mobile homeowners are interested in the program. And we're gonna take that information back to the board for the whole program, um, probably with some recommended guidance on how to approach mobile homes, because I would like to make sure they're included. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what about the city, though? Oh, yes, we do mobile So you might look into what they're doing, yeah. um, because I think there are a lot of needed people in mobile homes. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. So these are the three Mm -hmm. CWC is kind of, we do more homes because we do less, we, we, give, we uh, change light bulbs and, yeah. mm -hmm. and give shower heads and mm -hmm. install shower heads and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we also spend a long time looking at other things like insulation and ductwork. We don't go into the attic, so mm -hmm. we can recommend what else is needed. Um, and then GRU covers their customers and the county and others outside the city who are renters of very slightly different overlapping. And GCRA is our other partner that supports weatherization in their area. So they're, they're different uh, programs that we all do try to put together. <coughs> but with, so sometimes it makes sense for CRU to be the starting point because we can pass on information to the 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. We can't hear. I'm sorry. So before GRU and CWC had an additional program where they could do the smaller upgrades like insulation and water heaters, mm -hmm. but we decided since we were also doing that and using the same contractors to kind of disperse that funding and use it more for SUNA. But because we we're starting to get such a backlog of workers, it would be beneficial to go back to what we were doing. Um, as long as we have an agreement with our partner contractors that they support the same amount and involved. I wish there were more neighbors here, but I do know I I'm chair of the neighborhood association before Monica did Monica did it, but she is very aware of people in the neighborhood as well. And one would be Miss Acosta down there. I would think that she might need some services. Her home is older, it's a nicer home, but I'm sure her weatherization is just not good. See I would like to see her have an assessment. I do think uh, additional weatherization, whatever it is, whether it's um, installation or whether it's looking at the windows, I really couldn't name those things for, but I would think all of them might apply. And then I don't know about uh, the young man next door over here, because um, he told Monica he was coming. I don't know what his home would need. But I think the things that you're talking about that would in, in decrease their, their utility bills, any of those issues would be prominent in this community. I, and I think about Miss Irvin's house. All of these are older homes. They're not necessarily lesser in terms of size and all of that, but they are older in construction. They're older in not being insulated and old windows and those kind of things. So I think weatherization would be, be a big uh, uh, boost uh, the homes that are near the railroad track there, uh, I know there are a lot, I don't know who, whether those are rentals now behind the store, that, that little street that goes across there, they've upgraded a lot of those places. I just don't know if they're rentals or not, but they are old wooden buildings like Shotgun has, and so chances are that that might be the same. So I think what we could do is maybe find a way to canvas them more closely in terms of direct questions. Uh, would weatherization be a benefit to you? And when we, you know, and, and then bring our knowledge back to you, because off the top of our head, that would be my thought, but I don't know if you had some others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say pretty much along the lines of canvassing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's almost like we probably need to go to be systematic, get everybody on, say, 9th Street. Mm -hmm make sure that they have the information because sometimes we, we think that people know but mm -hmm. a lot of times they, they don't know mm -hmm. uh, and, and i would say that a barrier may be uh, the amount of paperwork that individuals have to, to provide to show that they actually meet the criteria uh, i mean it took me a little while a little while to gather the info uh, I, I don't know if everything that's on that list is really necessary for you to determine if if someone is actually eligible or not. So if you can maybe just look at the process one more time, make sure that there's no duplicate of information uh, that you're asking for. And so that when we are canvassing uh, the community, you know, with me having a personal testimony saying, hey, I had such and such done to my house, please apply. Mm -hmm. uh, then that would just add a little fuel to the fire and so forth. There's a way to help people fill out the paper. You know, if, it's, if it is something that's required, you know, because it's, it's a city program, it's taxpayer dollars, so we're trying to make 
make sure everything is correct. But is there a way to help people? And there may be. There, if we, there may be. I just don't know. I can't give you a pat answer on how that's being done. But you know, a lot of people sit over at the park. So maybe if we had uh, something that drew them to the park and tables set up around the park with helpers sitting at those tables and get the neighbors to come to that table and say, I'll help you fill it out. I know what you're talking about in terms of the form. And it's too bad that when one institution working with another institution needs to have the same answers that you have to fill out two forms to get it. That's what you're saying. So in, with all the computerization and all that we're going on now, it, 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 there needs to be a way to take the cumbersomeness out of it. That is a deterrent to a lot of people getting help. I know that when I talk to them about Mrs. Acosta down there, still have an accepted tank, and then uh, John Martell told me, oh, there's assistance and have her do this. I said, she doesn't want to do that. Not only does she not want to, she can't. What she wants is somebody to come and take care of the problem. And if you can do any of that and let somebody write it for and do whatever you do, you do that. She is not filling out any papers. She's not doing online. And she's not doing any of that. It's not in her DNA. But it doesn't mean she doesn't have a need and doesn't pay tax and doesn't deserve it. So we, I simplification, you have got to plug in people. Don't let me get on my bad way. <laughs> but whenever we sit around this table and make decisions for people who need to access the services that are not at the table, we're not meeting their needs because we don't hear them. I've lived through them enough to know some of them, but without actually hearing them say, oh, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I didn't see. We're never going to do it. And sometimes when the face looks like some of your faces, they're not going to tell you their business. So we need to be, we need to be at the table asking those questions and giving them that feeling of confidence that they, because they don't trust all of you. I'm sorry to say, but you know, I have to tell you like it is. But they, <laughs> I know you know that. So go ahead. Can we, um, for the notes, can we identify specifically what some of the, so I heard, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, can we just for the notes identify what some of the barriers are? So I've got from that, um, so, so technical, Techni yeah, te yeah, not yeah, technically from, savvy, from this, yeah. uh, mobility issues. Yeah. Uh, was there others that I need to Lack of confidence in, for, in provider. Relatable faces. Relate, yes. Uh, uh, non access to uh, computerization or, or lack of knowledge or lack of desire or whatever. Okay. So, along the same line, so I went and got the app application, right? And so, you have to show proof of a driver's license, a photo, or a photo ID, or and a birth certificate, right? And so, which means that if a person does, they may have these documents, right? But they may not have a printer or, or something to scan this information. And so, that, that becomes a barrier. Mm -hmm. Although they have the information at home, they, they may have their current taxes or the, uh, the homestead exemption. They may have all that information, but they got to make copies of it, which means now they have to go to Walmart to get a scan, go to the public library. So it's, it's another step for them to have to overcome. Um, Where you turned this application at NHGC? So they, NHGC Housing and Development Corporation, they are partners with us and they will do all of that for you. I don't know that everybody knows that, but yeah. but they will. They will make all the properties for you if you can't print it, you can email it to them gotcha. and they'll print it for you. Well, don't, there, there's the board of those. Yes. Right. And so if, if that information was on here. What was the name of that? Then that would be. HTC. Yeah, yeah, but you say if you email it to them, that's a no-no. No, no, no. no, no. Whatever way you can get it to them, they can make copies. Okay. You don't want thank mustard on your jacket. I don't. Thank you. All right. Either All right. way. Um, they also, so, and we do thank probably you. should be more mm -hmm. clear on there. Thank you for saving me from this. Adults have to have driver's license. Children have to have birth certificates. Yeah. Children have to provide help. So it is a little bit more So some clarification on there, perhaps, for that, to show that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also,
So if we made this um, a forum, say, that was going to take, care, take place at the Depot Park, and we tell the neighbors, come to the park um, and talk with us about, have a snack, and, and bring along with you your Jerry, your Bill, whatever. We can make comments, or we'll take this, or we'll do what else if you have access to that on hand, or we'll help you find it. Because you can help them, while if you have a computer, you can have them go online, because you have their information. You can pull up two states and get the information off that you need, or they can verify it and download it, and you can print it when you go back. But those kind of things, I, I would think would be. I think hands-on, as much as you can do it, uh, to help them through it, and that shows your sincerity as well. I'm going, here's what I'm offering, and here's how I'm going to help you access That's a biggie. And the CWC application is much simpler, but require any documents. So that could be... Okay, right there on the site, that's right. And it's not going to it is a line of applications, CWC applications, either one. Do we have a two? Do we have a paper? Yes. Okay. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah. So I think we'll, you know, we'll probably leave here with some work to do for us, but as long as we have buy-in, uh, Lord, I don't believe I'm putting myself out for one more time, but anyway. <laughs> You can't get things done. If, yeah, if you say it, you need to back it up, and I believe in that, and I do want it to happen. I have fought a long time to get Spring Hill the help that it needs, because Dubois gotten the help, everybody's gotten the help, and we're still sitting here looking the way we are. Thank God there was some single family dwellings are going on that look really good down there, but there's still some very old, like um, the houses on the corner, and they need a lot of help still, and people are living in them, so you know, I think that we could do a lot with uh, um, increasing the, the, the comfort of people, not only just the comfort, just the economic status and everything, lifestyle, I guess is a better way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's what we'll work on too, Mun and I. We'll work on getting other voices besides ours uh, uh, to do that. It is a neighborhood with a lot of gentrification now. And uh, what we have to do with that is make them feel like if they live here, they have to take part in what's going on here. So we intend to bring those people, young people. Most of them are young people. Some of them are college kids. And, you know, their idea is to come and get a place to live and get a finish college and go home, but they have to know if they move into a neighborhood, they have to buy into it, if it's my neighbor, for sure. And so when I see them walking down the street, I call them, and I say, hey, do you live on this street? I said, well, do you know about the Cotton Club Museum? This is when we have our meetings, and so they must at least know that they moved into a neighborhood, and they, they have responsibility to that. If none other than to say, yes, ma'am, to Miss Vivian. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, that's good information. Oh, that's good information. Thank you. C A R T E. Well, Y V E T T E.
because even though my my house is 13 years old, so it's not an older house, mm -hmm. but I like to say it like this, that stuff that they make now isn't as sturdy, sturdy. as it was That's the truth. before. <laughs> and so I've already had to do um, weatherization, like, and I wasn't aware that I even needed to do that. So mm -hmm. like, um, um, I saw like this black spot on underneath the window or whatever and I was like what is that and I put my hand in the um in it and then my finger actually went through the wood and I was like oh, what is you know I'm trying to figure out where this is coming I'm like this house is not that old what's going on and so I had to no it wasn't mold it was actually wrong because from how the water was dripping off sure. of the edge, and it was it was hitting down and bouncing back up or something that's how they explain it but basically I had to have Talking done and have wood replaced underneath my window. My house is only 13 years old, and I wouldn't think, wouldn't think that I wanted to have done that already. So, what I'm saying is, um, this might be something that, even though the house doesn't look like mm -hmm. it, needs it. It's, I mean, you may need to get people out and take a look at And, and I think on. one of the issues, too, will be to really talk about what the bills are that they're having to pay. I, I, I'm, I can't even, I cannot even voice where I am with mine, and it's never happened. I mean, I hear, I live alone. I don't cook that much. I don't do much of anything, and my bill uses two thirty, two thirty. Last month, my bill was six hundred and fifty something dollars, and I don't even know what that means. I mean, I can't. I'm still trying to breathe from it. So I don't know that that's where our use of it's not what it's what I'm saying. But I need somebody who will tell me what I need to look for yeah, to find out. I don't want another month of six hundred mm -hmm. because I can't afford it uh, uh, to be that way. But there are other people with this problem. Right. And if we tell them we have some means of reducing, if you find out it truly is weatherization is causing it, and we're offering them a, re a way to change that, I think you'll get their attention. Mm -hmm. I think you'll get their attention. Because that is a big factor. When, you're, when your food bill is affected by the fact that you got to pay the light bill, mm -hmm. and buying your children's shoes, and sending them off with lunch money, mm -hmm. all of that's affected, then I think you get people's attention. Yeah, or medication and health. Yeah. Medication and health. Not even think of it. Not, not, some people aren't very old. Yeah. And so when you look at $100 stuff like that, and it's real, like I complained about it until I heard other people. Yeah. And, and let me, yeah. When I heard another, other people, that was like, wait. Yeah, let me go check. The other thing is, as we get, send around the word. Send out the information with your picture on it to your neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Mount Monica's picture, maybe. You know, try to make it neighbor friendly. So, oh, well, that's my neighbor. She's saying this, or she did this, or she wants us to do that, whatever. So they, people acquaint themselves with what's good. I can trust that. Uh, uh, she would de definitely not tell me something that's wrong and, and draw people in. And if you're doing it, for a family, you know, mothers still like to feed children and get them to bed and all that. So if you're going to do it around a time that they would normally be doing that, just have something for the children, uh, that would, at least food or, or something or, or something set aside. In this neighborhood, we don't have any children. We were glad when your two came and now they're growing up, but there are not that many children in this neighborhood, but other neighborhoods may be uh, affected by that. But I do know the elderly, people forget that we're living longer. And you know, even the government didn't plan on keeping us here that long. Med medicine certainly didn't. You know, they, they did all the research on people up to 65. I've been past 65 for almost 20 years. So they didn't, I tell them, I tell the doctors, you need to catch up with who I am because I'm planning on being in another 20 years. Okay. You, I need to know you have medicine that's going to take care of me until I get that age. So, you know, I use a lot of fun with it, but the idea is they bring it to the people things that mean something to them, giving them faces they can trust, and telling them issues that really will benefit them at the level they can understand. That's, that, that I think is real important. And I'm so happy to have, to have this conversation. I'm so happy to have this going on. Uh, because, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know how long you've been working on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well.
Yeah. yeah. And then they could kind of be working together. Yeah. Like yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And we, yeah. We'd have to set this up so that it occurs at the church and not at the museum, since the museum doesn't have a budget for this. Uh, uh, to run this kind of event. You, we have to pay for all of this and we don't have a budget for it. But my church is right there. So, uh, and it would be at Monica's use of, for any time that she wanted to set something up and I would be right there at her side for any of that. So I, when she meets, I'm sure she'll have this on the agenda for discussion, but uh, she's been supportive of it since she and then come to talk. So um, yeah, that's our thing. Lunch meeting for yeah. pastors from other churches. Yeah. Yeah. And we could draw that in saying, yeah, right. Or you saw the churches uh, that are in the video. Uh, we could certainly get uh, that happening. And, and they could bring whoever from their church that they're going to put in charge or, or whatever and, and get the word. Just the more people, the better. Um, and that's good. Even if you have to do it more than once. Or if the churches want to come together and have. Uh, you know, a four or five church meeting or something like that. However we could work it. I've got a county specific question. Uh -huh. um, so I'm doing sustainability and weatherization. Other members of my um, office, the seats office, are doing food security issues. And you know, we work with community support services for some of the work that they do. And we hit around with, you know, if we're gonna have a community meeting, like, can we bring information about all these sort of different Absolutely. things? Absolutely. Are we going to overwhelm? We're not going to no. like overwhelm no. people. No, no, no. 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 More information about it. Usually, people that are coming to me actually want to know what's available. Yeah. So the, I, it's fun because I went to one of the, um, another meeting and I had any, any. I'm just going to go check it out. And I sat there and I listened to something yeah. and um, they gave me some information. As soon as I left the meeting, somebody had emailed me and was like. Hey, can you tell me where I'm going? I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to the fall. Yeah, right there. You know, more, right? Yeah. The, so, yeah, more yeah. information about it. Especially if there's programs that are available to everybody. So, yeah. yeah, that's Cool. I'll see if we can put together like a packet of some kind. Yeah, that's got all the different resources that the county's got. Yeah, and organized communities can get the word out to their community members too. So if you didn't have everybody you wanted at that church meeting, your community is organized, our community is organized, but there are others that are also organized and they could be in charge of trying to get some information. A packet to take away. Yeah, because I'm telling you, I was like, oh, I just learned about this. Hold mm -hmm. on. Who you call? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and that's not a bad idea. So we are sitting here with three different things going on now because there's three tables filled with information. So may if you guys could sort of write down what's available, who's responsible, and where their number is, how to find them, and just make one sheet of paper that way that we could post at the church or post somewhere, or at least give to the leaders, if your question is about whether, whether it's safe, it's in the city or the county, blah, 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 this is your best resource. Or if we know it, the leaders know it, and we can hand those out, have them in our hands to pass out. We're certainly posting and, and giving out. And I think all of the issues you brought up about housing, about food, about blah, 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 it's just so, I worked on a group, oh, many, many, many years ago. And we were talking about this very same thing and it's so split up in the meeting and people didn't know where to go. And so they worked it out that we had a little flip sheet that on both sides of the sheet of paper, all of those issues had been handled with the name, what was offered, and the resource for it, along with the person and the number. And the people need to know they can attach the number. And it, all of this in, in the hands of the leader uh, makes it accessible uh, to give give people the services. Because I'm asked, I'm later calling the other day about about um, property, uh, 
inherited property. I don't heirs property. I don't know anything about heirs property. <laughs> so, you know, but I so but I do know a person who does know. So I was able to move give her that information. But uh, um, that that would be a good resource, I think, all the time. When we go to homes, we have a list like that. Yes. So we need to put them together in a packet so that I don't have to look three or four places. I have a packet. You don't go. Okay, I'll take up. All right, thank you. Okay, very good. All right, thank you, John. We have a resource list, but it's a book. Like, it's huge. Yeah. A lot more people are getting Zoom, Zoom friendly now too, so we may want to have a round table discussion offered on Zoom periodically every quarter or something to say, get your questions answered. If you have a question about utilities, blah, 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 and join this Zoom and send it to all the neighborhoods and uh, see if that is effective. You can have a focus for it. The focus can be utilities, but you could entertain all questions. It may be weatherization, or it may be uh, something else. Uh, but I, I do think that all of these people who are interested in having in have these services you want to offer, uh, finding the people to accept, access them uh, is a remarkable thing for you to do. And I do know that people want to know. Just um, just finding a way to get it out there is, is um, bottom line here. A quick, a quick question. Uh, I mean, there isn't such thing as an overload of, of just receiving too much information. I want to explore overload from the from the other angle. Is there what's what's your capacity? I mean, once we start reaching out to individuals in our community, I mean, we don't want people on the list for for years and years trying to get help because. Sometimes when people fill out the application, they're expecting service within about two, at least about two months, give or take. And so, if, if there's a, a a time elapse, then people will stop trusting the system because now mm -hmm. they, they can't get help and when they need help. When you said that you will help them, but we're running into that, and it's a factor of different things. So we we added four additional staff. And So you say you have about a six month backlog. I know somebody that's been on there six months. Um, I don't know if it was before this money came along or not, but how are you? I, I, I don't know where you think you are and how far back can you say you're giving services to now? So currently, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're more contractors to join us, and especially with the new that we're dealing with. 
the 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 the
you know, the landlord can certify and all this looks great, but this is the conversation we're having with legal right now, which is that we have to go out and do the tune-up. We have to verify at that tune-up that they qualify, and that includes confirming that there's no structural issues with the roof, that there's no structural issues with the building, that the electrical panel is upgraded. We ran in with legal. We have to do the initial inspection and then final inspection. It can't be a third party because we do have a contractor who goes out and does weather stripping and different small tune ups essentially with us, but he can't be the first and the last person to get to the third party. Now, first one sticks, he's going to take something in. It's in a hard way, actually. I wonder if we could have this our new energy technician, our tune-up technician. Is that something, is that a program that that technician can go through that we can charge to ARPA? And they'll then be certified to do that. Anyway, I, should, I, was just, I was thinking that this seems to be a duplicate effort. Um, it's a little bit, we just got asked, so the city has the new landlord rights program where the landlords have to have their rental homes up to a certain standard, and they wanted our inspections to count towards their inspections, but they also do a code inspection, we can do the energy efficiency side of it, but we're not codes officers, so it is, even though it's going to take both the landlord and the is primarily education, but we, we also do some things. We place light bulbs and shower heads and insulate some pipes. Just come in. But mainly we talk to the homeowners about all the different things in their home and things they can do. So those are things that the contract is going to do. It's a different it's a different service for the home. And at the same time, we emphasize education, but our own volunteers are not necessarily capable of evaluating the structure of the home. Maybe some of them are. Yeah. And sometimes in those big sections, one of the things that you have to look at is what a big picture of it is. And, you know, I talk about the depth systems. That right there could be a much larger contributing factor to energy efficiency than if brand new AC can do. Because putting a new AC on a bad dust system, you're just, you know, putting clearly a band aid on the cost. But back to your question, we have, at the beginning of this year, we had more money than we knew what to do with. But because we promoted the program so much this year, now we're going to be out of money back. Um, and so it's just, you have to have the resources in every. Process, or it's going to create this six months waiting. Um, fortunately, that means we're going to be able to touch so many more homes. Our end number is around 300 this year. In previous years, we were at 100 homes a year, so we got to touch a lot more homes this year, but it's, people had to wait a lot longer. And what happens when the money runs out? Do you just. We're hoping to get our operational budget increased so that we can maintain the same goals that we have right now, or we would have to take a step back. And, um, the LEAP program used to be structured a lot differently. We could only spend like $4,000 per home. Now we can spend 10, so we would have to go back to our old guidelines if we run out of money and we don't get we're also hoping to be able to apply for a grant to get some funds to help that out for the specific communities, but that's we're, we're waiting for authorization to apply for that grant. So can we get that in writing that <coughs> for the Spring Spring Hill Duval uh, the swag that <laughs> we, we that we be right first right? on on the on the list? I mean, is that a possibility? Or? If 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 we were able to apply for the grant and get, get the grant funds, it would be part of the part of the grant funds could potentially be targeted towards those communities if we're able to apply for the grant. We're, like I said, I, I wrote a memo to 
the special assistant to the city manager who's the decider as to who's going to be applying for that grant, asking if we can apply for it. But I have to hear back because that deadline's coming up in March to apply for it. So she's going to talk to Carmen first about the yeah. enforcing the memo? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and do we need to speak to it too? <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, can you at least, uh, since this, uh, Mrs. Fowler, uh, or either Monica, a follow up to let us know if it was approved or not approved? Uh, absolutely. Or, yeah, we'll reach out. Spring Spring and how do we go about uh, having like informational sessions at, at the faith based faith based uh, institutions or if uh, the community leaders want to have an information night about brotherization directed to Beth Carter's group. That's what her group mainly does for the entire city. Our marketing department can also take those requests and then send them to us. Um, but Yvette's group is really good about planning. They'll plan food for you. Like they they have already like a game plan on how to run these programs, the GRU the neighborhood. So reach out to Yvette Carter. What's the last name? Carter. Carter. C A R T E R. I have her information. Okay, got it. You probably have her phone number. I do. <laughs> she was here last month. But her group runs a lot of the community engagement. Do you know when was the last time that something of that magnitude was, or this magnitude towards like the uh, sending so, that information about the brotherization program and so forth? As recent as last week, we had a city services fair that was put on by the city manager with all of the resources in the neighborhood. That was in the I forgot what it's called. Okay. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, they have one at MLK, but they also have one across the street from Walmart on 34th. That's like the senior rec center that's on 544. Yeah. They just said that. Um, so I presented to, I think it was Mount Pleasant about three or four months ago, would be the last time I was presenting at a church. But we will do them. Um, it was preferred not to do them on Sunday, but we thought the biggest turnout to be on Sunday. So we will do Sundays as well. Prayer meeting. If people aren't usually, that's prayer meeting. Um, so some, well, you might have a pretty good. Depends. Crowds aren't that consistent. Not as much so as on Sunday. Right. And what was the response? I mean, it's, it's one thing to present information, mm -hmm. right? And, and and we should empower individuals with information, but we want some return and. The context. So, have you seen any like feedback for us, like people applying for the program? Well, the city services fair, we got a ton of good feedback. We received over 100 applications from the original city services fair. The church groups. Um, when I went, we were at a time when we had started excavating the bills, and there was a lot more direction on personal billing questions than there were opportunities to go through the different programs. I think that'd be a little bit different now because we're starting to get hopefully get past a lot of our billing issues in Jerio. But we do tend to bring like a customer service side and then a conservation side and really tackle it together. So the last church I went to wasn't a great turnout for the conservation side because the billing side kind of took the questions at the time. But also about churches that uh, see that we see this training for volunteers twice a year and we would love to have uh, churches like somebody to become trained as volunteers and then they would be able to work in their own homes, homes of the people that are trained. Uh, we have training When is it? It's March 22nd. 
29th and April 1st. Oh, okay. So it's a 12 hour training to the Oh, I see. Is that on here? You, you leave off the important <laughs> stuff. I mean, all this is good information. If you're going to feed people, you need to put it on there. Okay. Food and entertainment or toys for the kids or something like that. It really helps a mom decide if she will get away and her children will be taken care of. That's very, that's uppermost. I, when I, when we had this thing on Thursday starting at four, I'd made all these plans about what we would do, and I hadn't talked to Monica. And when I talked to Monica in her very quiet way, she said, well, Miss Lala, you know the children would just be getting home from school. You know people, and she, she I just opened my eyes, said, I'm retired, I don't have children. She said, that's, that's not gonna work. The mothers are going to get their children. They gotta feed them, they do all this. And so my plans changed based on that. So little pieces of information like that are key. And uh, granted, you do have your fires made, but maybe within the, um, the sign up, you can mention there that hey, that we will have some food available. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. and, yeah. And parents aren't just a dem aren't just a group that are nice to have. Parents are huge, like are very integrated in the community and talking to other parents all the time because they're like trying yeah. to get their kids to interact yeah. and they're talking to other parents. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like a lot of times with community engagement, we're like, well, you know, we'll try and get some support for parents, but they can't be there. They just can't be there. Yeah, uh -uh. but that's, that's uh -uh. like they're the, the they're the in, that's who you want to see. They're the ones that's who your targeted everybody group. Everybody and yeah, just, yeah. yeah, and they are very important. Stay-at-home moms can do it at hours that working people couldn't. So there is, yeah, there's definitely, yeah. I mean, I just find like, that, that sort of erases all of us. We don't have very many of those. We have some. Yeah. And that's a hard, fortunate thing. But it, 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 there's no mass here. Sure. Exactly. Right. Well,
creatively at how we can influence our public health, state level public service commission, our state level energy offices to make sure that those resources flow to where they need to go in the end. That's the benefit people that are experiencing actual energy burden. That the solar goes where it's most needed and benefits those communities that that need it, not just to the large utility scale systems. So that was the, the takeaway.
we are really ha happy we were able to bring together community members with our team and our visitors are here to inspire us and guide us. But we would also like to leave here with some ideas of what our next steps would be, taking the challenge that Leon gave us earlier of coming together to organize to create a really solid plan so that we would be in good position to capture some of the federal funding that's available for this kind of work. So I'd like to just ask people to talk about what kinds of next steps we should be thinking about um, for each of these areas, weatherization, solar, and green jobs. It's really important that we have a community buy-in and a community partnership. Um, and I'd just like to hear what people think might be the next steps for us to take to try to put that into practice. One of the things that uh, I think we can do right now uh, with our kids is as we move into the spring part of the year, many of our schools are having uh, career days and we would like to invite maybe GRU and, and some of the uh, industries to come out to the schools and send representatives out to talk to the kids about the career days. Uh, let's find out what schools in your area and maybe uh, invite um, industry to come out and be a representative at a career day at your, at your school. Uh, I plan on doing some of those at, at some of our schools. Uh, we tend to have them in the spring of the year and it'll be an excellent opportunity for companies to come out to the various schools and talk about uh, jobs in plumbing. Jo just not professional jobs, but Botech type jobs that's, uh, that's available. Uh, Santa Fe usually comes to these, uh, but it would be nice to, to ask uh, your, your local uh, plumber, would he like to go to your school and, and invite him to talk to the kids about what he does? Or your local electrician come out to the school? They, the schools are always willing to have uh, people come out. Now that covert tonight is a, a bigger deal, uh, to have your, your local uh, television repair person to come out and, and maybe speak to your child's uh, classroom about some of the things that they're doing. Okay, so and we have representatives here from Spring Hill, from Duval, and from Swag. And uh, we're, we're mindful of your time and your busy lives, so we're really appreciative that you took the time to be here. We also would like to know if you are willing to spend more time with us, learning with us as we move forward in this project. Um, and we'd like to hear what's the best way to do that. Would we have more meetings together? Would it be better if we just go to your existing meetings and talk to you? Do we want to form a little coalition group? that would work together? Yeah. I know for SWAG, we have a monthly SWAG board meeting on the second Friday of the month, and I would invite you uh, or someone to come, you know, to, we usually do it by Zoom, we just had a, a person meeting, um, to talk to our board about it. I think that would be wonderful. And I wondered if we might get that slide presentation in order, but we can also share certain slides out of it, or, send you that presentation so you can share that. Any other thoughts about how we might move forward together? And if you're interested, what you want to do. I, I definitely want to continue. Um, I think today was really productive. We had some great discussion. And I just don't think Zoom allows for the same type of discussion. And so, uh, some more in-person, uh, however you want to call that, uh, if you want to make it a committee or whatever, but uh, I think in-person helps facilitate the idea sharing as opposed to on the screens. I'm so happy to hear Monica say that uh, be 
because she is uh, a community organizer that has been doing more than her share. Uh, I've been uh, working in this community for over four years, and I can tell you that she has taken on a lot. Uh, I'm in awe of her, uh, and that you, you would be one of the first persons that I would ask how we move forward. I don't want to put another meeting on your agenda, but I want to make sure that somebody from Spring Hill is uh, involved uh, as much as possible. We're here to make Spring Hill, to assist Spring Hill in being uh, the best that it can be. So however you could make that happen, however you would suggest that we do that, uh, maybe uh, a uh, committee would be good, made up of all three neighborhoods, had a representative of all three neighborhoods, and it would make it more attractive to me to attend an in-person meeting, or maybe it was a lunch meeting or something like that, but I admire y'all for doing that Friday evening, because I ate Friday. Oh, Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, oh, 9 to 11 a.m. Yes. Okay, okay. Anything after four hours <laughs> too, <laughs> on Friday. But, you know, so maybe we can, we can organized like that, and then empower as many empower members as possible can attend the meetings. I would never want to take the uh, focus off Spring Hill. I see this as, this is creating a model that can be replicated. Yes. Yes. And um, so, but I would also love for your group maybe to just present to the SWAG board so that they're, they got to hear what we heard here. We've had some discussions about when we start with swag or the ball. And we really want to learn as much as we can from here. I think that I learned something today from the end here that I'd like to incorporate in further. So it's when, you know, how do you want to do it? Do you feel like you're ready to catch Spring Hill or you know, do you want to walk us this spring hill a little bit more and see there? Or I, I think we want to support in any way we can. And I think that's the whole key with these grants like this is to start with a smaller model and then see what you can upscale and replicate out. We're, I'm all here, so I learned a lot today. And I would take a lot back to our board and the Spike Family Resource Center Manager um, and how we can do more outreach, especially with the jump that conversation we had about this table. We can send a doodle out so we can get together to talk about it. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm impressed with Monty as well. I'm also impressed with Mr. Frazier. Monty, you, will, you married well. But uh, also, I'm just pleased to have Swag here and to have Duval here. Because no matter what we do, this is still a small project. You all realize that we're a small, all together, all three of us, we're still a small project. So I love the fact that we're going to put it all together. But I liked what we talked about at our table about these after church kind of things or something. I do think we need to get together uh, with more input and finding out where we want to go. Because we talked over here about one entity, but we didn't hear all of what all the tables said. So we still are, even in this room, not as fully involved. So I think for all of us individually to bring to the table, to the absent ones in the community who might be involved is a good thing. So I think this meeting leads into another meeting and trying to draw in more members from all the communities to talk about it. And then we can do what you're talking about, Monica, and keep it going. So I also want to talk about this illustrious Bella, right, young man in here who is a neighbor, who is right there. And I want to commend him for being here. I really appreciate you, son. I watch you grow, I watch what you've done, and I am so glad you're claiming your community and what's going on. So I want you to be a big part of supporting Monica because she needs your support and she needs what you can bring. And you, we know you as an entrepreneur and a very hardworking man. And I did that on purpose because these are young people going to lead this into where we're going. So if we could just talk about channeling the energy 
and channeling the model that we're discussing here tonight, but in a broader spectrum of, of people who are participating. Then we're ready to call it from that point. So we need that meeting set between the people who will do it. Uh, it will not be here, with, but we, I can offer Mount Olive Family Church if you want to do it still on Spring Hill. And uh, let's go, you can set the time and place and all that on, on Zoom. I don't care, I'm not do that right now. But I do think it should lead into one more, let's get it together kind of thing. Even though you can go take the swag individual, take the do all and all that, but then they're coming together of the minds, I think. Uh, Vivian, uh, you called us small, but um, what did he say? What? We bad at so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't want to bring you the thing that, you know, that putting on this other people is going to decrease our smallness. We'll still be small in the fell cross spectrum. That's what I'm saying. I don't feel none of that's tired. <laughs> no, I didn't feel like going on. So I don't have no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, so what you said, but we still be. Yeah, okay, all right. Small but We're small here. So the, this grant that we have is a great opportunity to get some really good advice from experts yeah. um, who are here. Yeah. We didn't get, the, there's no funding in this grant. We have no money to spend. So we're grateful to the county for providing lunch today. Yeah. <laughs> And we are trying to raise a little bit of money to support the community engagement in this, but we don't have that, any of that yet. So that doesn't mean, that doesn't stop us, but we, we need to find ways to, to be able to support the community participation, and, and we're trying to work on that. But, um, so I think, as I understand it, the next, the idea would be to have a next meeting at, um, the church, Mount Olive, Mount Olive is right here. Mount Olive Church, right over here, um, to invite the people who are here from the communities as well as others that they might be able to bring. And I have that be an in-person meeting. I think it should be with some food. Mm -hmm. And um, use that as the next step to decide how we want to move forward. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Any other thoughts? Oh, I just want to say um, thank you to Duval and Swag. Um, you know, Naquanda has said she wants to roll this out on Springfield first, but I I need you to be with me in this process. Um, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the ideas. And our neighborhoods are very similar, even though they're located in different places in our town. So um, I appreciate your input. Please come on this journey with me. <laughs> And, um, and we'll do some great things and make some changes here in Gainesville. Yes.